Namaste everyone. Thank you for <clears throat> joining in the recordings of Sri Suktam as I could not conduct the live classes due to some reason. But anyways, uh, this is a class where we will look at verse number 9 as well as verse number 10 of the Vedic hymn which is called Sri Suktam. Okay, but before we begin, let's start with the Shanti Mantra from the Upanishads. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bhunakatu Sahaviryankara Vavahai Tejasvinada Dita Mashtu Mavida Vishavahai Om Shante 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 He Okay. Uh, so, verse number 9 of Sri Suktam. Again, as I always say, the swara or the pronunciation is very, very important if you are reciting Vedic hints. Okay, so it is as follows. Gandadvaram duradarsham nitya pushtam kareshinim ishvarim sarvabhutanam tamiho pahvaishriyam. And the literal translation is that I invoke the Divine Mother Shri, who is the gateway to inner fragrance, who is invincible and eternally nurturing. I invoke the Divine Mother Shri who embodies the power of will and the power of action and the one who is the Lord of all living beings. Okay? And uh, the meanings of the Sanskrit words are Gandadvaram, it means the gateway to fragrance. Duradharsham, it means unstoppable or invincible. Nitya Pushtam, it means eternally nourishing or nurturing. Okay, the source of eternal nourishment. Remember, Venus represents your nourishment. Okay. Karish Inim. It means the embodiment of the power of will and action. It also means the force that propels the entire process of consuming food all the way to eliminating waste. Ishwarim. It means the power of omniscience or the intrinsic omniscience of the omniscient being or the might of the almighty. Sarva means all, Hutanam means of all living beings, Tam means to that, and here we refer to as to Shri, that means, okay. Iha means here, Upa Vaye means I invoke, Shriyam means the Divine Mother Shri Vidya, who is the goddess of beauty and bliss, okay. So this is a prayer to Jata Vedas, and uh, it is addressing the Divine Mother Shri Lakshmi as Gandha Dwara. Okay, Gandhat Dwara, which is the gateway to inner fragrance. Okay, so there is no greater wonder than the truth that Sri Lakshmi is Gandha. Gandha, of course, means fragrance as well as Dwara. Dwara means the gateway. Okay, so in a way, she represents the gateway to your own intrinsic fragrance. Okay, and it is very joyful when you realize the innumerable waves of omniscience and omnipotence that arise from Sri Lakshmi. Okay, why? Because time and space arise from these waves. Okay, and in the realm of time and space, an infinite number of universes arise. They get created. And these infinite number of universes are also the waves of omniscience as well as omnipotence. Okay, and out of those numberless waves, out of those innumerable waves, Brahma, which is the embodiment of creativity, gathers, you know, gathers those, gathers those uh, waves, okay, that emanate from Sri Lakshmi, okay. Twashta, the other name for Twashta is Vishwakarma, he is the celestial architect of the gods. And uh, Brahma, after gathering those waves, he gives, or he gives away five of those waves to, you know, to build this phenomenon world. Okay, the phenomenal world, which is known as Huloka. And uh, from the wave that is infused to the power of sound, Tvashta or Vishwakarma creates the sky. Okay, from the wave that contains the power of touch, Tvashta creates air. From the wave that contains the power of visibility, Tvashta creates fire. From the wave that is infused with the power of wetness, he creates water. And from the wave infused to the power of smell, he creates earth or solid matter. So these five waves represent the five elements. Okay. 
and uh, this cluster of five elements that means space or akash air or vayu fire or agni water or uh, jal and solid matter that means prithvi comes to life only when the divine mother shri lakshmi penetrates the earth and makes it alive with her aroma okay and from that different forms are emerge different names get assigned okay and the universe of galaxies and the earth which is of course where humans reside they receive discrete identities all right and uh, you know shri lakshmi is the soul of the earth of all the space of all the elements okay that means earth water fire space and air okay and by being the soul of the five elements she becomes omnipresent as well as omniscient okay and shri lakshmi also makes herself manifest by you know she makes herself available to human beings by manifesting herself as turmeric okay gandha and turmeric is her body and she is turmeric soul that is the reason you have you know the turmeric ritual which is very common in the subcontinent okay irrespective of religion okay and uh, turmeric is a very healing as well as rejuvenating you know it it has intrinsic powers of healing as well as rejuvenating okay turmeric means haldi right and uh, this essence of lakshmi becomes the gateway or dwara to your physical mental and spiritual well being as well as the doorway to the well being of those who recites the shri suktam okay and you know as parents i think this is common across the country having turmeric juice okay not the juice of the turmeric of the turmeric powder okay juice of the turmeric which you get by you know by grinding the turmeric okay my mother used to make me have it every you know every friday or maybe because you know because she knew that lakshmi somehow resides in turmeric as gandha okay but uh, anyways i think this is very very common in uh, all areas across the country but anyways okay so as uh, gandharva dhara she is the embodiment of uh, you know embodiment and gateway to inner fragrance okay and by being that okay by being that she brings the rishi of mahamrityunjaya mantra who is the rishi of mahamrityunjaya mantra it is markandeya okay markandeya she motivates markandeya to unleash the you know mantric power particularly sugandhim what is sugandhim sugandhim is the finest of all fragrances so this is also a pointer okay vedic texts will never mention things directly this is also a pointer that turmeric contains the healing powers of rejuvenation okay turmeric is the herb of immortality it is not garlic okay garlic is very tamasic okay garlic is very tamasic it comes from the blood of rahu but turmeric contains the healing powers of mahamrityunjaya okay and you know it represents the sugandhim the fragrant portion of the mahamrityunjaya mantra that destroys you know foul smell bitter speech and all negative thoughts and as a, and as such by being this gateway to inner fragrance she also becomes the gateway to the mahamrityunjaya mantra okay and by recognizing her as the gateway to this mantra you can also have a taste of the elixir of immortality contained in this mahamrityunjaya mantra okay so the trick is you know i'm i have already mentioned it have turmeric juice okay not the juice made from turmeric powder okay if you can get organic turmeric powder it's very good but then since we are in india organic getting authentic organic stuff is very difficult okay so get that raw turmeric and uh, make juice out of it and consume it every friday if you cannot consume it every day but at least consume it every friday it's going to be really really beneficial for your health and well being okay so in uh, shri suktam the divine mother is also invoked as duradharsha okay duradharsha means the invincible force and without her you know without her uh, vishwamitra uh, sorry uh, 
Vishwakarma cannot gather the materials to create. Okay, without her, the protector and provider cannot gather the tools and means to protect what is created. Okay, without her, the lot of change. Okay, the lot of change is time. All right, it's time. Time cannot deconstruct and introduce change. And uh, when you invoke Sri Lakshmi, which is of course the fundamental principle of abundance. It propels the process of inner you know, process and phenomena of creation, maintenance, deconstruction, and renovation. Okay. So when Lakshmi comes to you as Duradharsha, you know, and joins you in this journey in the world of mortals, you can serve them to your full satisfaction. Okay. So Lakshmi is all about the highest expression of Lakshmi is service. Okay, it's service. That is the reason Lakshmi or Venus exalts in the natural 12th house of Pisces. That means it's it's always the love that you get by giving. Okay. You cannot, you know, no matter how much love you get, it's never going to be enough. But how much love you give out, you know, by the process of serving others, which is of course the 12th house of the horoscope, it means you are getting a thousand times more love in return okay so the highest expression of lakshmi as duradharsha is service okay and this is also a prayer to invoke shri lakshmi as nitya pushta which is the embodiment of lasting nourishment okay so this power of nourishment and sustainability pervades every nook and corner of the universe okay so this nourishing power is present not only in a speck of dust, it is also present in a mighty star. It exists in every part of the natural world, including humans. Okay. And how, you know, you cannot, you cannot have anything that does not nourish you. Okay. But what happens, you know, people due to various reasons like distrust, you know, as I mentioned in the last class, last class like discord, like emotional discord, they become disconnected from this inexhaustible source of nourishment. Okay. And when you cut yourself from the source of nourishment, you know, it becomes dormant. You know, you start aging, you start decaying, and then that happens. Okay. There's a secret of immortality that comes from the Siddha school of yoga. And it says that if you want to live long, you need to have someone you can love. Okay. You can nourish right so you also are a source of infinite nourishment so when you are loving someone and giving them nourishment in the process you are also nourishing yourself okay now don't you know use your cyclonic intelligence that oh my god i can give love to god no i'm speaking about giving love to a human being romantic love okay not that platonic love it's not going to help you or help your cause it has to be romantic love okay so Lakshmi as Nitya Pushta, she brings, you know, she she brings the the you know the as the embodiment of lasting nourishment, she motivates this seer, which is Rishi Markandeya of Mahamrityunjaya Mantra, to unleash the power of Pushti Vardhanam. Okay, right? We have heard the Mahamrityunjaya Mantra. It contains the verse. Uh, it contains the word Pushti Vardhanam. It means the power that expands the domain of nourishment beyond the constraints of physical reality. So this Pushti Vardhanam portion of the Mahamrityunjaya Mantra can remove the conditions that cause physical, mental, and spiritual decay. Okay? And as, you know, when you unleash this power of Pushti Vardhanam, you again get a taste of the elixir of immortality that is contained in the Mahamrityunjaya Mantra. Okay? And you remember, Mahamrityunjaya Mantra is a, you know, the a part of Mahamrityunjaya Mantra also appears in the Mrit Sanjeevani Mantra. Okay, so you'll not get the Mrit Sanjeevani Mantra. I have it. I'm not going to share it with you. But, you know, a part of this Mahamrityunjaya Mantra also appears in the Mrit Sanjeevani Mantra. That means the mantra to make people rise from the dead. Okay, and that is... That is the domain of Sukracharya, which is the, you know, which is the personification of Venus. Okay. So you are also, by through this verse, you are also invoking the Divine Mother as 
karishini karishini means the power of action of will uh, power of action and will and as kari kari means the doer okay why doer because then you are invoking the power of action okay and when you mobilize your inherent potential the inner reality begins to manifest in the external world okay that means you know right now i am having this air conditioner in my room somehow it existed in as an idea in someone's head but then you know that inherent potential got mobilized you know someone thought of making this available to humans as a result you know it manifested in the external world okay so you know when you invoke lakshmi as karishini imperceptible tools and means become visible okay that means you activate the dormant desire for worldly achievement and spiritual success all right and uh, as a result through this power of action you know your theoretical knowledge begins to express itself in concrete ways okay like scientific concepts they get transformed into applied sciences okay the dormant sense of aesthetics is transformed into the performing arts and imagination becomes innovation okay so there is a cliche that tells you you know knowledge is power actually knowledge is not power application of knowledge is power and lakshmi represents the application of this knowledge that is the reason when lakshmi joins mercury mercury is of course knowledge okay jupiter is also knowledge where you know where venus exalts you know venus exalts in the sign of jupiter so what happens is you know mercury and laksh uh, venus together it is known as lakshmi narayan okay without the power of lakshmi narayan cannot move so when this primordial force of pulsation you know kari it joins you you know it joins you it enables you to shake off your inertia inertia means tamas and it puts you on the path of action which is rajas okay so that is the reason venus is known as a rajasa graha all right and it represents your efforts okay and once you know once you activate rajas once you act once this act once this uh, rajas of venus is activated human beings get motivated to shake off their shrouds of mental conditioning that is the reason you will see a boy who was born in the slums is now making crores why because they have just refused to accept their mental conditioning okay they have renounced their slavery to the past and you know they have started to live actively and fully in the present what happened to dhirubhai ambani he was a uh, you know he was on the road at one point of time but then he built all of a sudden he came up with this huge empire called reliance and we still know you know what reliance how reliance is expanding so he was born in a slum basically but what happened he refused to accept that mental conditioning and he started you know he started he committed himself to self effort which is rajas okay Lakshmi is also invoked as Ishani or Ishini, and this represents the power of will and determination. So, you know, at your will, the power of action begins to pulsate, and the actor begins to act. Okay, so your way always, you know, your intention is always, always will always show the way. That means the path will follow you. Okay, and when you, you know, when you have an inclination. to change something you know destiny will also change its course okay lakshmi is also sankalpa right sankalpa is the power of intention which is inherent in brahma the creator lakshmi lakshmi is also dhatri which is the power of nourishment inherent in vishnu and who is vishnu vishnu is the embodiment of the divine as the provider and protector lakshmi is prakriti prakriti means the ever changing force that is inherent in shiva so together as a combination of sankalpa dhatri and prakriti lakshmi is ishini ishini means the power to do what you want to do the power to do the power to be free from doing what you don't want to do and the power to undo whatever has been done so this is the only power that you want right everyone runs after money everyone runs after relationship people run after sex but what if you had the power to do what you wish to do the power to be free from that you don't want to do and the power to undo what has been done so it represents the boundless this power as ishini it represents the boundless might of the almighty okay and how do you get this power 
when you love unconditionally okay when you become an epitome of kindness and generosity and once you become that you live in the you know you live you start you start commanding your body and mind to act according to your will okay and lakshmi dwells in all mortals in the form of this indomitable will power and discernment discernment means buddhi which is also the personification of mercury okay so because lakshmi is kari the power of action because lakshmi is ishini the power of will and determination so there is this action and every action has a purpose right so every aspect of creation is constantly performing action and every action is purposeful okay and every you know you become pur pur you become purposeful or you become you realize your dharma when every part of your body and mind is engaged in pur purposeful action okay and how can you remain engaged in pur purposeful action by constantly being aware of your timeless connection with lakshmi okay so you know dear your your thought your speech your action everything has to flow effortlessly and purposefully okay you have to instinctively know what to consume and how much to consume what to retain and you know what to get rid of what to remember and what to forget what to say and what to refrain from saying okay so lakshmi lakshmi as kari and ishini she becomes this fundamental force of transformation which is called kari shini okay so once she becomes kari shini you know once she once you invoke her as kari shini you can serve your will to your full satisfaction okay so this has all this verse also invokes lakshmi as ishwari ishwari is you know is the is the intrinsic shakti that presides over the entire sentient and insentient world okay so the whole world is integral to the you know to the self awareness of ishwari okay she lives in if she lives in all beings but you know you can know she reveals herself only to a few fortunate ones okay and where is ishwari seated she is seated deep in the heart of living beings okay she determines how much knowledge and memory they are to be granted you know people always crave about their children not being enough smart enough not being not having enough memory power you know you cannot you cannot force your child to be smart or to have more memory power if your child does not have the grace of ishwari okay because she is the one who decides how much knowledge and how much memory every human being carries in this world so people who are caught in this current of samsara they have a limited capacity to face and process all the contents of their mind okay and uh, if you are not fully absorbed in lakshmi you know sorting everything in your mind can overwhelm you know can be truly overwhelming okay so it's her grace that ishwari puts a veil over the vast field of memory and illuminates only that which you can use to find lasting fulfillment and ultimate freedom okay and think about this you know if you in your mind if you could recollect whatever happened to you in the last 1000 years of your births of all your births and if you can see what will happen to you in the next 100 years you will go mad right you will go mad so it is a gift that a lot of things remain hidden in your field of memory okay and that is the key to lasting fulfillment and ultimate freedom because it's you know it's absolutely okay if you tell yourself that i don't know this yet maybe i'll know in the future and even if i don't know it's fine so once you invoke this aspect of lakshmi she you know she ensures that you make the best use of your knowledge and memory and you continue expanding the scope of your consciousness okay so this prayer is a resolve to you know to make you the sadhak as a conduit for this ishwari shakti okay and what does this once and what happens once you become a conduit of this shakti you are able to shed avidya avidya means ignorance asmita asmita means distorted self identity also refers to the ego raga means attachment dvesha means aversion abhinivesha means fear okay so you know once you become a conduit once ishwari shakti flows through you you 
are able to shed all these, you know, all these non requirements. Okay. And as you shed all these, you know, all these qualities, you learn the art of living in the world and yet remaining above it. Okay. So, you know, you have to embrace this Ishwari Shakti as your inner guide. And once you do this, it will enable you to discover the best in yourself and the best in others, which is very, very important. Okay. You don't, you not only have to know the best in yourself, you also have to know what is best in others. Okay. So that you can see beauty and joy and abundance all around you, which is the very essence of Sri Lakshmi. Okay. So we will go to the next verse, which is verse number 10. So this verse runs as follows. <clears throat> Manasaha kamama kutim vachaha satya mashimahi pashunam rupa manasya mai shri shayatam yashaha. So this is a prayer so that you achieve your objects of desire. This is a prayer. So that your intentions materialize, so that your speech may be truthful, so that you may acquire the full range of cattle and grain. Okay. And this is also a prayer to, you know, to request Sri Lakshmi and her glory to find a home in your heart. Okay. So the translations are Manasaha means of the mind or related to the mind. Kamam means desire. Akutim means intention. Vachaha means speech. Satyam means truth. Ashimahi means may you achieve. Pashunam means of cattle or pertaining to cattle. Rupam means form or essence. Annasya means of grain. Mai means in me. Shrihi means Shri, which is the, of course the Divine Mother. Shrayatam means may it reside. Yashaha means glory and fame. Okay, so as you go deeper into Sri Suktam, it is very apparent that you will lose your mental concepts. Okay, you'll realize that you don't even have a mind. Okay, that you are simply a wave of the radiance of Jata Vedas. Okay, but then if you lack specificity, you cannot interact with those who have a concrete identity. Okay, so this is. Shri Suktam is a process where you lose your identity and then you pray to the goddess to give you an identity compatible to whom you serve. Okay. So what happens as you go deeper into this verse, you are bereft of ignorance, self-identity, attachment, aversion and fear. Okay. And these are the afflictions that are prominent in this world of humans. Okay. So, you know, you are praying to Lakshmi that after dear mother, after taking all this away, I want you to give me a mind and fill it with your thoughts and intentions. Okay. And that mind should descend into a body. That means, you know, that mind should join this body that serves your purpose. Okay. And while living in this body, you are praying to her to learn the skills to identify your desires and translate them into action. Okay. So that your actions enable people to identify their own desires and translate them into action. Okay. So your actions should, you know, bear fruit of helping and serving those people who are striving to find fulfillment in life. Okay. So now, you know, you are taking upon the intention of Jata Vedas. Okay. And those intentions of Jata Vedas are meant to guide your thought, your speech, your action. And even while living in this world of humans, you should remain aware of the source of your intentions and power that drives them. Okay. And in full view of this awareness, you know, you should strive to achieve what this world has to offer. See, spirituality does not happen by running away from this world. Spirituality happens by being in this world and by engaging with it. Okay? But then you are also making a commitment that whatever 
fruits this world gives you those fruits will be used in the greater service of humanity okay it is also a prayer to keep you always truthful to ensure that you never make false promises or utter something that you don't mean wholeheartedly okay it's a prayer so that your words conform to your thoughts and your actions conform to your words okay so it basically means doing what you say and saying what you do okay so you know this earth is endlessly diverse right this earth is home to unimaginably vast range of insects and animals okay there are a whole range of creatures that vary widely in appetite and behavior yet all these creatures they serve a common purpose to help mortals thrive their you know thrive and find their freedom and fulfillment okay so your well being depends on the diversity and well being of animals you know both wild and domesticated you know the well being of the animal kingdom depends on the well being of insects and the world of vegetation so as a human being you are standing between you know jada vedas the omniscient being and the world of mortals okay and you are praying to lakshmi to create condition uh, to create to create conditions conducive to the health and well being of animals okay so you know you are praying for the well being of the entire earth you know you are praying that there should not be any deformity in those around you okay and this includes animals not only human beings you are praying that their limbs and organs should be fully formed okay you are praying that the plants the animals and the insects around you they should contribute to a balanced ecology and so that such balanced ecology can enable you to serve the world of humans okay you are praying that the world of humans should be filled with food okay and nothing in this world is more important is you no know, as is is as important as food because food makes up your body everything is unreal everything is a myth except food you know, life depends on food and lack of food leads to death right you know food that is deficient in nutrients will lead you to a slow death and what is the root cause of anxiety and fear it is the anticipation of not having enough food okay now it has translated into the anxiety into in the anticipation of not having enough money but as human beings we have inherited our tribal instincts okay so the root cause of all fear and anxiety is not having enough food okay so if you are fearful and anxious you have to tell yourself that if you have food to fill your stomach the next day there is nothing to be fearful and anxious about okay and this fear and anxiety drains away the clarity and calmness of mind okay so you know living from hand to mouth is very anti lakshmi okay it's very anti lakshmi you know you are not living according to the highest principles of abundance all right so this shri suktam is a prayer this verse of shri suktam is a prayer to fill your home with nutritious food okay not only that it is also a prayer to fill the minds and hearts of all human beings with respect for food and you know give them the motivation to share with those who are deprived of food that means you know in a way it is telling you not to waste food it is a sin you know people take everything when you go to a wedding you you should see the amount of food that is wasted people take everything on their plate and then they throw it away because they realize that 50% of it they cannot have okay so once you start respecting food once you start you know having nutritious food having nutritious food is very important okay not all food is nutritious once you start respecting food once you give up the habit of wasting food once you imbibe the habit of consuming only that which is essential for you only that which you can consume not nothing less nothing more divine mother shri lakshmi comes and starts living with you okay so this is about verse number 10 all right so that's it from me in this class i hope everyone will have something to take away from these two verses
And if you have any doubts, since this is not a live class, please leave behind your questions in the comments section and I'm sure I'll be able to answer them. Okay. So thank you so much for watching this recording. We'll have the live classes from next week on a regular basis. Namaste. Om Guru Venamaha.